Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Ellison and here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from around the world. As the G8 leaders, including U.S. President Barack Obama, meet in Northern Ireland June 17th and 18th, Pope Francis had some advice for them. Politics and the economy must serve, not rule. The group of eight industrialized nations were also urged by the Pope to help broker an immediate ceasefire in Syria and to bring both sides to the table to start negotiations. Pope Francis's letter was written in response to a letter British Prime Minister David Cameron, president of the G8, sent the Pope outlining some of the priorities Cameron intended to push during his one-year term as president. Cameron's priorities include openness in economies, governments and societies through the support of free trade, tackling tax evasion, and encouraging greater transparency and accountability in government actions. Pope Francis replied that if they want their work to have impact, all political and economic efforts and policies must be seen as the means, not the end, with the true goal being the protection of the human person and the well-being of all humanity. In news from around the country, it looks like the United States has a new ambassador to the Holy See. Ken Hackett, a retired president of Catholic Relief Services, is expected to take over the post that has been vacant since former ambassador Miguel Diaz left in late 2012. Diaz now is a professor of faith and culture at the University of Dayton, Ohio. A native of West Roxbury, Massachusetts, Hackett, who retired in 2011 after 18 years as president of CRS, was nominated for the position by President Barack Obama on June 14th. As president of CRS, Hackett focused on outreach to dioceses, parishes, Catholic organizations, and colleges and universities. He also appointed lay people to the CRS Board of Directors for the first time and worked to strengthen ties between Catholic Relief Services and both the United States and the Vatican. Catholic Relief Services has nearly 5,000 people working in more than 100 countries. In other news from the Vatican, Pope Francis celebrated a special Mass for Life in St. Peter's Square on Sunday. Rome Reports has more. It was a Mass to celebrate life. And as usual, the Pope greeted the faithful who lined the streets near St. Peter's Square. In the background, one could hear the roaring noise of Harley-Davidson motorcycles since thousands of bike owners also attended the Mass. The celebration, titled Evangelium Vitae Day, translates to the Gospel of Life. Diciamo sì alla vita e no alla morte. Diciamo sì alla libertà e no alla schiavitù dei tanti idoli del nostro tempo. In una parola, diciamo sì a Dio, che l'amore, vita e libertà è mai delude. The Pope explained that the gospel itself leads to life. The notion that rejecting God will lead to freedom is mistaken, he said. On the contrary, following the gospel leads one to a full life. Ma spesso lo sappiamo per esperienza. L'uomo non sceglie la vita, non accoglie il Vangelo della vita, ma si lascia guidare da ideologie e logiche che mettono ostacoli alla vita, che non la rispettano perché sono dettate dall'egoismo, dall'interesse, dal profitto, dal potere, dal piacere e non sono dettate dall'amore, della ricerca del bene dell'altro. When it comes to truth, the Pope said the Bible shows all the dimensions of human drama, everything from the good and evil to passion, sin and its consequences. He said selfishness leads to lies, and although we may try to deceive ourselves, God, he said, cannot be deceived. Il cristiano è un uomo spirituale, e questo non significa che è una persona che vive nelle nuvole fuori della realtà, come se fosse un fantasma. No, il cristiano è una persona che pensa, agisce nella vita quotidiana secondo Dio, una persona che lascia che la sua vita sia animata, nutrita dallo Spirito Santo perché sia piena. The Mass was a way to echo John Paul II's encyclical titled Evangelium Vitae, which outlines the Church's stance on the defense of life in all its stages. At the end of the Mass, the Pope blessed the sick who attended the celebration in St. Peter's Square. 
Looking at more news from around the country, a new website is aiming to protect youths from the dangers of the Internet. Roman Catholics and Greek Orthodox in the United States have collaborated on www.faithandsafety.org. The site instructs web users, primarily parents, on how their children can safely navigate the online world. It was activated in the middle of June, which is Internet Safety Month. The site, subtitled Technology Safety Through the Eyes of Faith, has news about sites that teens use, shocking details about children's first exposure to online pornography, suggestions on how to use technology safely at home, and tips on negotiating the mobile app scene. The site has been two years in the making. The idea for the site was brought up during a summit meeting of the Religious Alliance Against Pornography attended by Catholic and Greek Orthodox leaders two years ago. And finally in the news, 2017 marks the 500th anniversary of the beginning of the Reformation and preparations are already underway for ways to commemorate the anniversary of the split in Western Christianity. From Conflict to Communion, a document released by the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity and the Lutheran World Federation outlined ideas for joint commemorations of the publication of Martin Luther's 95 Theses usually recognized as the beginning of the Reformation. The document, written by the Lutheran Roman Catholic Commission on Unity, examines the central points of Luther's call for the reform of the Church, the points addressed later by the Council of Trent, and especially the Second Vatican Council, and issues that still divide Catholics and Lutherans. The official Catholic-Lutheran dialogue has focused on four key areas, justification, the Eucharist, ministry, and scripture and tradition. The document said that while differences still exist, Catholics and Lutherans have reached a stage in their ecumenical journey where they can explain together what happened in the 16th century and appreciate the sincere faith of the other. Well, that is all the information we have for you at this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.